Essendon ASADA drug investigation will take an interesting twist today because they're holding hearings and I think the first cab on the rank at 10 o'clock this morning will be the biochemist Shane Charter, also known as Dr Ageless. You know he's the fellow who provided a number of peptides to uh, Stephen Dank and uh, is therefore heavily involved in the Essendon situation. Uh, and uh, Shane Charter joined us on the, on the line. Good morning. Uh, good morning, John. Tell me, how did you first get involved with uh, with Dank? Uh, that, that stems back to uh, about 18 months, nearly two years ago, in relation to his inquiries as to um, setting up peptide business in Melbourne. And why have you decided to give evidence uh, to Asada? Because you don't have to. The players do, but you do. No, you're exactly right, mate. And uh, I've been just sitting back uh, hoping that this would like everyone else in the general community, because unfortunately for football, the, uh, this investigation's really overshadowed the great game this season. And uh, However, the, the process had to take place. It was necessary and timely, given the significant advances in the sports science field and the, now the obvious lack of governance and structure that's in place in relation to sports science. So I know, I know both the public and the football community really want to wrap this process up, deal with the issues and just move on with the game. But um, unfortunately, it's been made very difficult to achieve that end point because, well, number one, ASADA can't really use the Australian Crime Commission intelligence and information, and effectively they have to start from scratch. And um, there's been a lot of mis misinformation circulating in the public domain, and that takes up a lot of time and effort to put out the spot fires. And then, of course, you have key individuals that are integral to the investigation, not willing to step up and uh, well, help Well, out. in your case, you are prepared to. But as a former powerlifter yourself, you've got a fairly um, intimate knowledge of the illicit side of things. What sort of things did you take when you were uh, actually an athlete? Oh, yeah, the, the number of products that I took are not relevant to the proceedings today, but um, what, that, that, what that does do is, is I'm someone who walks the talk, understands both sides of the fence, what's illicit, what's not illicit, uh, what can be used as performance enhancing and what shouldn't be used in a, uh, a WADA or a SADA-sanctioned uh, athlete. So if you're an athlete today and you've got uh, access to a smart sports scientist, should you ever get caught on a drug test? The reality is, when we only have to look at the Lance Armstrong situation, that you could go your entire career uh, without being found to be positive, but that's not to say that you haven't used performance-enhancing drugs. Shane, there's Ross Stevenson here. What do you expect to be asked today by ASADA? Oh, ASADA have already pre-empted uh, that number of discussions, and they, they've got, uh, as you would know, a number of gaps in their investigation due to uh, key persons not willing to front, and thus um, they need to fill those gaps. And what I'm going in today is to try and give them the evidence and the answers that they that they ask me questions to, and then that'll hopefully expedite the process, bring this whole thing to a conclusion, and uh, wind it up in a more timely manner. Can you give us an indication what the question, the main question they'll be asking of you will be, and what your answer will be? Yeah, well, Asada have basically asked me, can we just uh, do the process and then let the, the people that uh, roll this out, roll it out appropriately rather than leak? And this is part of the problem that I said. A lot of information in the public domain, but always accurate. And uh, better be the authorities that run the process, roll it out appropriately and go from there. Is your evidence going to be good for Essendon or bad for Essendon? My evidence is going to be factual and truthful, and however that pans out is how it pans out. Is it possible that any of your answers might incriminate individual players? Um, the, no, no, it shouldn't incriminate individual players because it's primarily based around uh, the products in question and uh, which products fall under S2, SO or the WADA code. So my, my evidence is primarily scientific and factual in relation to products as opposed to individuals because I'm not a part of the football department and I didn't personally inject anybody. Did any of your products end up at Essendon? Uh, this, this is part of the investigation and that's what we'll be going through today. You've got some text messages between you and Dank. Will you be providing them to the authorities? Uh, text messages, emails, invoices, uh, a vast array of physical and electronic evidence. Will you be done in one day, Shane? Uh, they basically said, leave the week clear and however long it takes, it takes.
Okay, what's your understanding of AOD 9604? Did you have any involvement with that anti-obesity drug? Uh, not in the actual... I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not a part of the company that owns the rights and patents to it, but uh, I do have experience with AOD, yeah. Right, and your understanding, what's its water status? Yes, yeah. It's pretty clear, really. And what is it? Well, if you look at... Uh, people, for some reason, are arguing Category S2, which Category S2 is peptide hormones, growth factors and related compounds. So they're, they're talking about whether it acts in a particular fashion that's uh, against the code. No, really, uh, if you just look at category SO, which is non-approved substances, that gives you the answer to the question. In other words, it's caught by the catch-all provision that says if it's not approved, it's banned. Exactly.